money equals happiness. I think it's the greatest misconception of today's era. This is why a lot of people draw con assumptions and conclusions when they create parallels, or not necessarily parallels, but not necessarily oxymorons either, but complete opposites. They create opposites which justify their position in life and how they don't want to change. Like, who wouldn't want to be rich? Everyone wants to be rich, right? But no one wants to put the work into it. We all know this. The biggest reason why, as to why I think people aren't rich is because they haven't defined what rich is, first of all. And second of all, they assume rich is bad. I think this is a huge issue in modern day. People assume that when you're physically wealthy, there's always a catch. And of course, there's always there's a catch. There's sacrifice, there's hard work. There's hard work, dedication, sacrifice. <coughs> hard work, dedication. Fully going to that. And I think that comes with anything, though. I think people that live a mediocre life, that live the 9 to 5 life, are still hard working. And they still have a level of dedication. They're dedicated to their 9 to 5. But anything, they're dedicating that to the wrong thing. When it comes to their own projects, when it comes to their own side hustle, when it comes to their own lives, they often fail to dedicate put in the hard work ethic necessary and that's required in order, in order to achieve the life that they want and this is in part because of the education system I believe and the way that you parented for the most part the education system has been completely and utterly molested and bastardized, bastardized, bastardized for profit I saw a, a, a screenshot went back I'll edit it in the video I'm only editing like a few screenshots in the video. But I think it was quite important I need to talk about. And that is like school. A school, they, they kind of just stop giving a fuck on their students. They just chose short term monetary gain over the success of their students. They don't care. School's main objective is to pimp you. And then send you off to uni so the, so the uni can pimp you instead and then you're having fun right you're partying bro and you're just living a life in which you think that's the high of your life it's very very weird it, 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 with the university system at least Americans go to college you call it university or uni a lot of kids that come out of college or university end up being like self-entitled school brats and like everyone thinks they're like super prestigious and everything, so it's like socially acceptable. Always oh, going to university, so yeah, amazing. Always oh, going university, oh wow, I didn't go to university, oh wow, that's really great. And even I have fallen into that stupid trap at times where someone I knew was going to university, I was like, wow, you're going to university. And I realized, oh shit, he's gonna be like spending four or five years of his life partying and then doing drugs or something <laughs> and sleeping with girls and not focusing on his goals. And Thinking that's the height of his life and losing track of his life. Money does not. Going back to harking back to the original point, school just finesses you out of your cash. It famouses you. Famous the goose, for me, the is classic. Of course, there isn't like a negative effect about it. Like, if you. It isn't completely negative. If you're going to university with the sole intention to become a doctor or become an engineer or become a nurse, I believe that's. That's, that's how I say this completely honourable. I think it's quite a noble thing to do. But you have to realise like at some point they won't pay you enough. They don't pay your ass enough, bro. It's gonna be um, It's uh was it nurse in the UK can pay thirty four K, thirty six K a year and that's like buff off the tax. We can take on pay like twenty five K thirty K. They just took Six, ten grand, twelve grand, just from you existing. So you're not even being paid money that you're, you're getting paid. Like it's fifty pound hour, nah, it's more like nine to ten. for boost. And then you, the UK government will spend two billion pounds censoring Mr. Top G. No one cares. Like honestly, like we all love Andrew Tate, right? You either hate him or love him, he's a very polarizing, polarizing character. For the most part, everyone will go along, along with their lives. You like Andrew Tate, but, and Andrew Tate has been probably a, a positive force in your life if you're watching myself on my channel. 
However, Andrew Tate, as, as much as you love him, he's a fictional character to you. He's pictures on a screen. He's unreal. I love Andrew to, to bits. And if I meet him one day, oh, I'd be honored. But then again, I do not know Andrew. <coughs> he's pictures on a screen. I love his message. I love his positive for him, bring him to the world. But then again, he's not real. I hope he gets out of prison. Of course, I'm not fool. Everyone thinks the same thing. But at the end of the day, like, it's very difficult to care about him. The UK government spent two billion trying to censor him in schools. They failed. They wasted two billion. They probably embezzled out two billion in their pockets. For those. And, but they won't spend money to pay NHS staff. So there's like a clear lack of correlation here that we're missing. It's weird. It's weird, guys. Okay. Money does not equate happiness. That's what I'm gonna say. I think money is just an arbitrary number that allows you to have freedom within your life. Money does not have give you happiness. Money satisfies the tenant, the three holy tenets of happiness, which is freedom, family, and fitness. Freedom is in the complete ability to be autonomous. Autonomous, self, not only really self righteous, but how do I say this? Self acting. When was the last time you did something that you truly desired or truly desired that you wanted to do, and you did it purely with your own self accord, and you felt immensely satisfied with yourself afterwards? That's freedom. You can't answer that question coherently, like, oh, what? What, what, what was the last time I could do something that I really wanted with all the freedom in the world with all the, the way I wanted da, 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 da. if you can't answer that question coherently then you probably lack freedom which is why you're probably relatively unhappy in your life so we want family I think family is some of the most important things it's one of the most important tenets of the three and some of the most important things we want people that you know in the world because they are your blood there's nothing quite like it um, Especially having your children, a wife, your grandparents, I think I will take care of my mom. And my grandparents, in time, when I need to, I think it's quite an honor if I have anything. And there's plenty of girls you can see, before, like I said before. There's only one, one grandma, one granddad that you have. And he's, you might have two, I, I have a, you might have two because you have a wife and dad, and then dad's side is gone, but my dad's side died before I could be there. You get to know them, and my granddad's side died. Which is kind of sad. I grew up fatherless for the most part. So, <laughs> I'm not a fatherless child. Can I write that you fatherless? <laughs> ain't, no, ain't no good harder than fatherless. I'm sorry about that. That's stupid. Um, I only have one grandma and one granddad. I'll be, I'll be devastated if they pass. Honestly, yeah, I'll record my reaction to see how I am. Mostly for myself, because it's usually trying to get to but I'll be completely and utterly shocked. I think I'll be like, I have to be like a week to recover from that. Unless I have something going on with me, like business, or this and that, boxing, entrepreneurship, money coming in, I have to do it. I think I'll be like, smack on my ass. If I have a job or something, especially, I'll just be smack on my ass. I'm think I thought about it in my head before, and it's been a year since then, but I cried when I thought about it. And I cried once in 2022 when I got COVID. I think with COVID, like, you have like feelings of wish you're about to die. So my head looks stupid. I think with COVID, like, you got feeling of which you wanted to, you feel like you're about to die. That's quite like trapping, confining feelings. I, I cried because like, I really had to change my life thereafter. It was a FTE that you took my life. FTE. <sighs> quite a heavy heart to talk about anyone in my family dying. You know, when you're young, you think everyone's going to be okay for a long time, but if you have a shred of intelligence, which most people do, I mean, most people do have a shred of intelligence when they end up ignoring it thereafter. You often find yourself 
the world can combat it with the truth. The truth is, no one will live forever and no one is going to die. I think that's why my biggest goal in life right now, the biggest envisioning of success that I had before, I made a video of it, but recently I verified my channel, yay! Recently I've ever my channel so I can post a video, but I envision success, and success to me is making a bunch of money, getting the best shape I can, partying, having fun, but having my grandparents there along with me. Like being open with them, like spending time with them. It could be a fishing trip, it could be partying, it could be like a sophisticated party where we're sniffing wine, mm, flowers, that's what it's what it's what it's sniff to my flowers. Dandelion, I think the dandelion extracted within this wine and the person that's stomping it, I can smell the fungus on the feet of <laughs> the person that's stomping it. Mm, quite a <laughs> sour, bitter aftertaste. <laughs> Wine's trash. I don't like wine. I hate all alcohol. I don't like it. I'm an athlete. I don't like, I don't like boots, I don't like alcohol. <laughs> don't drink it. Spit back in the cup. Something like that, those small little things, and then just seeing a smile on my grandma's and my granddad's face, or everyone just laughing and being together. I feel quite the teary feeling in my nose at the moment because those moments to me are invaluable. Maybe I'll get a girlfriend as well along the way. I never, I have a struggle with girls, but it, it's, it's, I struggle with the girls in a weird way. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, it's an embarrassing story. I'll tell you. When I was in year five or year six, this is like elementary school, a girl actually confessed to me and she was she was white. So I remember her, her, her initial was CM. CM. CM Punk. But uh, she was white, she was taller than me, which is at a time what I liked. And I still like to this day, I like taller girls. But she, she confessed to me, she's like, Anne? Because everyone called me Anne. They called me Anne Tran. My name's not Anne Tran. It's Asian names, you can't pronounce that shit. Sorry, I thought I was going to itch. And that's my name, that's my name. I put it as Jimmy Chan on my channel, my channel cut for this channel because that's how it's actually pronounced. I'm frustrated, way more transgender all my life. Anyway, she didn't see me for my name, she didn't care. And she said to me, I was eating my lunch here, yeah. my lunch. Smooth. This is an unspoken riz. Unspoken riz. Are you want to talk about it? <laughs> Stupid. I'm not like crying. Like, it's just like, it's just funny. It's, it's really funny to me. But she she told me she like. <coughs> <laughs> See the shame on my face, bro. It's like she looked at me with like some dreamy eyes, bro, as if I was like handsome as fuck. You know, I was a cute baby. I was like a buzz cover. I had this buzz cover. It's this the boy, OG day one. I don't even know who he is now. That's me. That's me, bro. That's my grandma. You're gonna see her face soon. Alright, I'm not. I'm not gatekeeping. I'm open, transparent person. She had dreamy eyes and everything, and then she said to me, Anne, I really, really like you. And I looked at her and I was like, <laughs> I was like, I wasn't even laughing, I was just eating my, eating my square pizza. You remember that square pizza with the fucking lady who would chip your wedges? I was like, fucking, nothing. I hate that shit. That's why I got so fat. I was like, I'm enjoying that shit. I, I, I love that shit. Anyways, I might have a mukbang channel for funsies when I'm rich as fuck and I'm traveling the world. One dollar food in Pakistan, in India. <laughs> that shit looks fire. I can't hang it. Like, I'm, I'm making fun of that right now. That actually looks so fun. <sighs> that, uh, that life is something like, I don't. Means I looked up and I like, huh? This is a bit too loud. Oh, 
funny. And then I ran away. <laughs> and um, it kind of it's like a weird um, parallel to how I am now. I haven't really changed that much. I have changed a lot radically, especially with my mindset, the physicality, the completeness as a human being. I believe I've changed a lot, quite a lot since then. However, I do see that as quite a good analogy in the way I approach life. A lot of things like I push on girl professionally after that as well. Like three girls professionally in that year. And I ran away or like I'm rejected all them. Um, ever since then I've just been running away from my problems. To be parallel to life or the life I need now. And now at seventeen years old, turning eighteen in four months. Shocking. I one, I got increasingly worried. Two, I'm finally facing the issues that I ran away from so long ago. Like what? Like I think like it's a stupid. I I never advocate for thinking like this, but I think sometimes thinking like this is quite informative and growing, growth inducing. Like what if I had chosen to have her as my primary school girlfriend? Nothing would happen. We would have hold hands and kiss and some shit. It would have been nothing. Because we're just kids. But what if I hadn't run away from my problems? Would I have been a radically different person as to compared to now? You know, obviously I'm grateful for these moments because they shaped me into the person I am now. But I often think to myself, I believe I could have been so much more ahead had I chosen the right things looking down the line. And this is quite like an older, mature, or not necessarily masculine, but like I think mature is the right word. Mature and sensible person sensible type of thing, a sensible person, huh. a sensible type of thing, apart. Like, it's the type of thing that a sensible person would say, reflecting back on their lives, which I think is so, so important, I think reflecting back on your life and reflecting back on your choices is incredibly important, and understanding and trying to solve each incremental step and each incremental problem all along the way is immensely, immensely essential towards self-growth and self-improvement, however, Sometimes we can often wallow within these thoughts and just fall into, how do I say this, immense amount of regret, envy, jealousy, and negative emotions which end up conspiring to nothing, which I find immensely, immensely negative. Which is not good, obviously. <laughs> that might have sounded like a bunch of waffle, but I am pretty sure I said I put that coherently enough to the point where it makes sense. It's basically you just think about the past too much and then you're sad and then you think like, oh, I could have done something better. And you just end up thinking about these things so much to the point where it cripples you. And it makes you, how do I say this? It makes you often difficult. Not that it's difficult, but it makes you often susceptible to lack of action thereafter because of the amount of pressure you put on yourself. You get overwhelmed by looking at the entire mountain and, it, and its issues rather than the pathway leading to the mountain and trying to solve an issue step by step. Do you understand? I think going about things step by step is the most important thing you can go go about things. As um, I read a book. Actually, I read, I read two books by now. Not my third book. I forgot about it. I read it, but I read Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu. Lao Tzu and It Is Fire. And he says in the book, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. A lot of people, they hear this, they're like, wow, super deep, but they don't understand this. Like I said before, there's a difference between knowing and understanding. I, need, I actually need to go deep into this topic. I don't think, I, I, I think I've just touched the surface level when it comes to this topic. But the difference between knowing and understanding, if you knew that a, a journey of a thousand miles began with a single step, then you would just, you knew it, oh yeah, go back in your life. But if you understood that journey of a thousand miles began with a single step, we take radical action in order to take those single steps in order to fill the thousand miles that you truly that, which is what your intrinsic human purpose is in the first place i think as humans we intensely desire to have adventure adversity the, for trial and tribulation as humans i think that's unisex unisex things i think it's more for men but it be for unisex that's why i see characters like lara croft I mean, Lara Croft, you say that it's like panning to women as well, but there are women explorers, so I think humans have an intense desire for adventure. And 
and exploration and experiencing culture. This is why people, so much people are, think to themselves, oh yeah, I really wish I could travel the world. Because you could then explore the world and appreciate it for what it was. A lot of rich kids, like, I especially like, I'm not, I'm not relative, I'm not rich at all with this life is, but I have been around affluent people, like people that got fucking money, especially in Vietnam and Korea. They got fucking money. And a lot of the rich kids thereafter, they kind of just, they act like they're poor and they just go around like penny pinching. It's kind of stupid to say, but they do this so they can try to understand the value of money. And they go around penny pinching and they go around exploring. Exploring the world for what it is. So a lot of kids, they have they go to one spectrum, they either go, you know, it's like three choices actually. It's, there's a multitude of choices, but there's three main choices which I've seen. Which is why it all builds up the point that money doesn't equal happiness. It all comes together to harken back to the point of money doesn't equal happiness. Because some of these kids can go down to their business entrepreneurial route, like their, like their forefathers, like their ancestors told them to. And they go on the entrepreneurial route, become a businessman, expand the business, they aggressively grow the business. They could find fulfillment that way, could not find fulfillment that way, it's down to their choice. They go on these the penny pigeon paths where they act broke as fuck, they're poor as shit, and they just go around and explore the world. Or they could just fucking scramble it all and fall into bad habits like drugs and debt and alcohol and booze. Which is why, like, for me, I see myself as an athlete. I train regularly, I woke up today. Absolutely adorable. I see myself as an athlete, so it's often difficult for me to, you know, surround myself with those type of people. Like, I see myself as a person who does sports. And changing that perception of myself gave, gave me a, a huge level of self confidence, it gave me a huge level of self assurance. I think boxing and sports in general is the only thing, one of the only things getting me sane. Like, I sell boxing gloves. Now I'm kind of low in stock. I have much more to do. It's a boxing class. And I make money off of it. And I make friends out of it. And I spar. I have a spar. And I can go back to sleep. So I can get energy. So I don't crash. Like I get super tired when it, when it comes to that time when I need to spar. Because my friend was super tired before when he sparred. And he just wasn't the same. Like it was just a completely different individual. No excuses, obviously. But he wasn't operating 100%. We operate like 40 or 50, in all honesty. I don't want to be sloppy when I spar because then obviously I punch in the face. I'm terrified. I'm terrified, but I still have to do it. Anyway, I'm not around drugs, so I, I could never go down that path. I obviously still can. There's still a possibility, but it's highly improbable considering the pathway I'm taking. I have alcohol in my house. I don't drink alcohol. I have the option to take drink it. I don't drink it. I'm more worried about myself. But also, literally. I'm like 5'7 I'm boring Almost like I grew like 2 centimeters. I think it's actually quite more But then again well, It was at 3, 4, 5 centimeters Since the advent of last year Which is quite worrying Especially since growth slows down I have 4 more years of growth I want to be like 5'9 Or like 5'11 But it's impossible if I could reach 5'9, five 5'10, five I'd be so satisfied and happy with my life. Obviously, that you'd obviously want more. I want to be 6 foot. But that's where Air Force is. <laughs> Gotta give myself that extra inch, 5'11, and 5'11, I say I'm 6 foot. Like some kids, that type of shit. One does not equal, equate happiness. One equates to freedom. Do not compare the two. Do not make parallels and make excuses and make rash, rash assumptions. Like, broke in a Honda and happy, or super rich in a Ferrari and sad. Because there are very, well, a lot of people that are incredibly happy, incredibly satisfied, incredibly fulfilled, incredibly, how do I say this, not necessarily motivated, but they're, they're incredibly, how do I say this, they have, I said fulfillment, but there's something deep within them that they feel as if they complete life, they complete the game of life, they have a level of completion. Have a level of satisfaction, I think it's the right word, satisfaction and triumph and just wholeness. And they have a Ferrari, and they have the big ass house, and they have a wife, and they have a bunch of kids, and they got, I was saying two wives, but like some, <laughs> it's like some fucking shake type shit. I'm up to you, up to you if you like that shit. I think it gets a headache at some point. I would like 
two wives, but they would be heading at some point, and throttles, and they never end well. I think monogamy is more long term sustainable than polygamy because of jealousy and negative emotions can often sprout, and you have to be like the Rizzler. You have to be the Rizzler of Rizzlers to fucking negate that shit. Kung Fu, Aikido, that throughout that shit. Like, um, I remember before I watched Crazy Rich Asians, and that's the first movie I watched in a while. I watched another movie thing, but not because not because of my own accord. It was just like I was at a family gathering and I watched that movie. It was like um, Gods of Egypt or Cyrus type shit, and then people turned into a thing of the gods were huge and humans were small, and humans kind of stupid, and the earth is flat, and all this bullshit. You drag the sun, or like, yeah, stupid bullshit. I would love it to it, obviously. But it was interesting because that's the movie I intended to watch. Out of my heart, and I could not help feel immense amounts of jealousy. Like, I kid you not, guys. Like, this is not. Oh, yeah, jealousy is not good at all. Jealousy is good and not good. It's a double edged sword in which the side that faces you is sharper. It's good in, in, in the sense that if you are envious, if you are jealous, if you are full of jealousy, but then that inspires you to take action in order to change that jealousy into satisfaction. So, you're jealous, for example, you're jealous of someone who has a much better life than you. Everything complete, he's happier, he's more complete as an individual, he's fulfilled. I just, I don't know how to repeat myself. <laughs> and you're jealous of him, but instead of like trying to fucking kill him, you decide to take action and to get that life instead for yourself. I think that's good. But then jealousy can also turn into you're so blinded by jealousy, you instead desire to murder him and fucking take everything away from him because if you have it, then. And you're taking it from someone like you. It's a classic old adage a rich person becomes rich by taking the money from people. Like, well, yes, but actually, no. In the sense that a rich person usually gets rich because they provide immense value to the market, which supersedes the money that they ask for, in which then they can take the money. Like Amazon, like SpaceX, like the boring company, like all these things. Like you, people forget. Everyone would like to say, oh, Elon Musk could solve world hunger with all his billions. Well, yes, for a week. But then everyone's hungry again. That isn't an Elon Musk issue. That's a trillion dollar issue. That's a multi trillion dollar issue. That's, that's a governmental issue. The world needs to come together to fix that shit. Not just a one person. You're completely and utterly delusional to think that one person could possibly renovate the entire landscape of, of Africa and mountains and China and the, the horrible fucking slums in South America and the horrible places in the horrible cold lands of Russia and Siberia like, as if you could completely renovate that with a few billions bro come on this is not a playground all right billions obviously for one person is an immense amount and, and Elon Musk is a crazy guy in a, in a good way he pledges it all back into the business motherfucker man it is a tiny house <laughs> He has, a, he has his own car Tesla. I don't think he has any super, does he have supercars? I think he does, might have. It's, it's, it's like a band-aid issue. I think it still links to money equals happiness. People conflate everything with money. Seriously. Money is a means to an end, guys. I see this, I'm chasing value. Chasing money. Even then, I still see money as a huge means to the end. It's like, after I get enough, or I steal enough, which is quite high, it's still like, I want 15 grand a month first. I obviously want to make like my first 11 grand within a year. I have small steps along the way, small goals along the way. I think that makes the, work, the entire journey worth going through. But then it's all about like 15 grand a month, 10 grand a month, 50k a month. I think 50k a month is the amount of money in which you reach self-actualization. I think I need to talk about this in depth in a video. I have a lot of video ideas. I have a lot of video ideas. It's no joke. I have like 50 video ideas I've looked. I'm a retard. How many of you guys? Anyways, I think 50 grand a month is like this insane amount of money. Like, it's absolutely insane. Like, it's so weird. Like, a lot of people see 1 million as nothing, but they see 50 grand a month as an insane amount when that's half a million a year. Like, how the fuck does that make oh, 600k a year? How the fuck does that make sense? You can move to Pi, you can get zero income tax, there's VAT, VAT, VAT tax, value added tax, but then you can always just fucking dodge that shit. <laughs> I think billionaires pay tax, nah, all their assets are on the decline. 
No tax. They actually claim a tax benefit for that. Credit card. Game three. Nah, they just know the rules of the game, bro. Alright, little bro. Ooh. Scratching my ass. I'm gonna get the lie on you. I've known this is a little kitten. So it's super comfortable around me. Still a bit of a scary cat. It, he's so dark, you can't see him. The hat, that gotta be racist, bro. No, I don't mean like that. It just. I think I should make a video on having a pet for self improvement. Because having a pet like a dog or a cat gives you like an extra level of responsibility. And they're absolutely adorable. It's literally proven that once you pet cats, you feel good about yourself. You look at animals, you feel good about yourself. And I really want a dog as well, but I have I live in a, like a relatively small flat. It'll be very hard to get a dog. I think I need to get a house first to get a dog. I really want a dog. But you know, it 